As a person, I found her totally admirable. She was very calm and unflappable, very good sense of humour. People who worked for her were bound by intense feelings of loyalty, and I think that loyalty was returned because she was very loyal to those who worked for her. Sir William Heseltine is a long way from the halls of Buckingham Palace, but from his Sydney apartment, the 90-year-old recalls the role of a lifetime as the Queen's private secretary. Well, I would describe her as a, as a really first-class boss, I think. After growing up in Fremantle and graduating from the University of Western Australia, one of his first jobs was as private secretary to the then Prime Minister, Sir Robert Menzies. I was 25 when I was appointed private secretary to the Prime Minister, which was quite young. I admired him for his intellect, obviously, his wit, and his extraordinary high standards of public life. A two-year secondment to Buckingham Palace quickly turned into 27 years working with the monarch. Well, may we say God save the Queen, because nothing will save the Governor General. Among the memorable moments, an early morning phone call from the Governor General's secretary in Canberra on the 11th of November 1975. He told me that uh, the Governor-General had just dismissed the Prime Minister. What? I said. Uh, and he confirmed that that had happened. Uh, and I can remember it was, at that time, a complete shock to me that this had come out of the blue. And there were all sorts of pressures on the Governor-General to act when he did electoral and financial. So I had sympathy for him in the decision, but I did think it might have been managed rather better. The recently released palace letters revealed the Governor-General regularly briefed the palace in the lead-up to the dismissal. Sir William, who was then the Queen's assistant private secretary, insists the letters rule out any suggestion of prior knowledge. The um, release of the correspondence between John Kerr and, and the private secretary Martin Chartres I think has dispelled any notion that there could possibly have been that there was some sort of conspiracy with, with uh, the Queen and Buckingham Palace to bring about the dismissal of John Kerr. As private secretary, Sir William would escort the British Prime Minister of the day to their weekly audience with the Queen. The one I had most to do with, of course, was Mrs Thatcher. I met the Prime Minister when she arrived. She and I would have a bit of a conversation about what was going to happen, and I was able to offer her a glass of whisky, which she seemed very grateful to have. Prime Minister, what a lovely morning. The latest season of television drama The Crown has been criticised by some historians and royal watchers for its dramatic flourishes. The dangerous game, I think, to make enemies left, right and centre. Not if one is comfortable with having enemies. Are you? Oh, yes. One episode focuses on a Sunday Times article which claimed the Queen thought Margaret Thatcher to be uncaring, confrontational and socially divisive. It was uh, not a good moment uh, in relations between Number 10 Downing Street and the Palace because the Prime Minister was pretty vexed, as you can imagine, reading in the Sunday Times that the Queen disproved of her views about treatment of the coal miners during the coal strike, about sanctions being imposed on South Africa, uh, and in general about the, her views on the, on the Commonwealth. Sir William says the suggestion that the Queen had any involvement in a leak to the press is pure fiction. In no circumstances that I could conceive would she ever have done such a thing, and I know she did not. And what transpired was almost the complete opposite of how it's presented in Netflix's version in, in The Crown. Sir William is confident the monarchy will live on, despite ongoing Republican sentiments. Before uh, a change takes place in, for example, Australia, somebody has got to come up with a, with a better solution. And a solution which is going to appeal both to the politicians and to the public. I think they bring a sense of continuity, and particularly in the case of the Queen's long reign, there's this feeling that there's a sort of umbrella of continuity as a functioning and sometimes rather dysfunctioning family. Um, and that fascinates 
people and keeps them in, engrossed in what's going on in the royal family. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.